In this video, I try to figure out how new tools work, play with a rubber, I make some minor modifications and I will show you how to make a snowman. Hello fellow modelers! This time I prepared for you a model of a German walking tank. It is pure fantasy and didn't exist even on paper. At least I do not have evidence. There is a straightforward manual with two markings, so not many options. Thus I will make my own. It is sci-fi, so I don't need to follow any rules. And it's payoff. I already built a few kits for Model Collect and they sometimes have a problem with the accuracy and with missing details. But it looks fine to me. At least I have open doors for modifications. I use for gluing with super thin glue. It evaporates on air fast and the application is straightforward. Model Collector recently released a few crazy kits like this and I primarily bought this one because I like the box art. The robot legs have many parts and the most of them fit well. But with this one I have a small problem. The joint seems to me a little bit bigger than supposed to be. I didn't want to figure out what is wrong with it, so I'm using brute force. Yes, this is slightly better. I think this gun looks very weak. It's supposed to be probably some anti-aircraft flak. I remember that I ordered some time ago gun barrels for Stuka in 48 scale and accidentally received barrels for 32 scale. So yes, I will use them for this model. Everyone like big guns. I only needed to modify plastic parts because the barrels are somehow larger. Just for comparison, the plastic ones. That was some fun. So now I must do the less amusing part of each model. And that is sending plastic imperfections, filling gaps and more of sending. I use for filling seam lines Tamiya Grey Party. You probably also know from previous videos, white one. They are almost identical, but the white seems softer, smoother and drying slower. Therefore for imitating rough texture is better grade one. But for general use, like filling, it doesn't matter which one you will use. The cool detail is torch card texture, like here in the picture. It happens if you will try to cut thick metal with oxygen flame. You can simply imitate it on your model with a sharp blade. And of course I will make at least some weld seam lines. I usually use epoxy party from Alteco, but this one from Tamiya is finer and more flexible. Something like green stuff. Well, assuming if you know what is green stuff. You can stretch from party thin snakes. And the weld lights texture itself I'm making with a blade. You can also use toothpick, but in this scale it's better to use some sharp tools. Something is wrong with the whole model. It still looks like a panther tank with legs. So that I will try to add some additional details, accessories and armor. Some spare plastic parts were in the kit. And few of them I have from old models like a Sherman of Flak for Titzwilling. I usually keep all not used parts for modifications like this one. No one knows when it will come in handy. In any case, you can also create the same from plastic boards or profiles. And a few accessories on the backside. Some of the parts are from plastic kits. I only made a molds and cast them from resin. Boxes and bags are from aftermarket accessories sets. And the Panzerfaust I made from scratch and also made a molds. So the last but not least part which I want to modify are leg armor plates. I am gluing plastic strings from spruce, which I melt and stretch under flame. Thanks to my patrons for considerable support. I recently upgraded tools and bought with handy punches. This one is precisely for hexagonal details. I use it for bolts. I insert a plastic board and with a puncher I make a lot of small bolts. It is fantastic also if you are making scratch build models.
the second puncture is for circles. You can again choose from different diameters. I am trying to be extremely cautious with the hammer because of the 0.8mm pin. It would be a shame to break it. I am imitating nuts with the small pins. The result is extraordinary. I tried to once make a similar details from plastic profiles and my six same cuts were hard. Ok, the last detail before painting. I'm making canister holder. I cut a strip from plastic board. Now I'm spraying over the whole model one layer of a primer. It will nicely unify details and color will adhere to the surface better. Especially on the metal gun barrel. I know, I know, sorry, I told you last detail. But when I covered the model with a primer, I realized that the mechanical system for moving guns would be protected against dust, snow or water with some fabric cover, as we are used to from modern army vehicles. So I imitating the cover from epoxy party and imitating ripple shapes with a toothpick but also with a scalping tools like this one with a metal bowl. Yeah, this is cool. Besides, I'm making minor and puzzle damage with a Proxon micro drill. It was again a minor delay from painting process, but it worth it, I assume. I use for airbrush acrylic lacquer paints from Tamiya or AK Real Colors. They are not so much toxic like pure lacquer, nicely smooth, quite resilient and it is easy to clean them from airbrush after work. I prefer more colorful models with shading and highlights. It always looks more attractive than only one color and the process of painting is also fun. Therefore I'm spraying a light grey color on the edges and raised parts. It will make them optically more significant and the whole model less uniform. I recently replenish the colors with the Vallejo acrylic shades. Especially these rusty ones are very helpful. The box art inspired me to make the armor on legs rusty. It will also make the model optically more inconsistent. Ok, the rust. You can use some chipping technique or oils, but the easiest and fastest way is simply stipple color with a black foam. You can also use an ordinary sponge for washing. Now I'm painting wells with a silver color. For most of the time the wells on German tanks were stainless. Mmm, interesting. I'm protecting the paint job with a clear lacquer varnish. These types of varnishes are very resilient and you can apply many types of chemicals without worries about previous work. You can buy masking tape of different sizes, but they are mostly overpriced. Thus I used one large masking tape and cut small strips with a blade. The process of masking is not the most satisfying thing in the world. But at least this time I didn't need to follow instructions and simply made lines as I want. I recently discovered a new AK or MIG products for masking. It has a consistency like a hot asphalt, but it will not adhere to the surface and you can easily remove it after painting. Now the white color. But this is important. In the previous video I tested dust weathering with an enamel color and this time I decided to spray the whole camouflage with it. So no acrylic, no chipping varnish. But instead I'm spraying Tamiya white enamel color. If Tamiya isn't available in your country you can use Humberol or Revel. When I bought the black masking party I was skeptical about reusability. But you can mix the rubber again and the color will almost vanish. It will look like a little bit lighter than new one, but I think you can reuse it again like 10 times. So the color seems to be properly dry. Now it's the turn for the sponge again. I moisten sponge to Tamiya X20 thinner and stipple it slightly on the white color. You must work slowly and carefully, because you can wipe out color from the surface entirely. I like this technique more in 72 scale than chipping, because the diluted color is softer. 
and primarily you can use masking tape for camouflage pattern. The chipping varnish usually is thick on the tape. The rest of details I am painting with Vallejo and Revel Aquacolors. If you want to paint some weathering, then I highly recommend protecting white camouflage at least with one layer of a clear lacquer varnish. I like oil paints, however, even in this case I am mixing dark brown wash from odorless thinner which can dilute white animal color, but not lacquer varnish. I almost forget at decals. I use decals chemicals to make them softer and nicely uniform with the surface. And another layer of varnish, but this time matte. It is final layer which allows painting color modulation with oils and also will make the model less shiny. If you are applying wash, decals or chipping, then it's good to have a surface covered with a clear varnish. But for color modulation and weathering, is better matte because it works almost like a sponge or canvas. The color will suck in and you can make a nice soft shading transition or stains. You can blur oil paint with a dry brush, but for achieving the stronger effect you can use odorless thinner. The barrels and boxes must be fixed on the tank surface somehow. I am making ropes from lead wires. I like this material because it is very soft and flexible.
We are coming to the end, slowly. The legs are still too clean. If this tank walked through a field or terrain, it would be quite messy from mud splatters. I diluted oil paint with a thinner and moistened paintbrush with it. If you will run over fibers with a toothpick or any sharp tools, you will make a nice splatters. The size of the dots depends on how many colors you will have on the brush. The camouflage on tank is for winter, so I use a little bit of snow. I have for wargaming miniatures snow texture from Citadel, so this is one expensive solution. But I rather like this ready mix filler, you can dilute it with the water and it has even better structure, and the whole container costs $7. I didn't found anything better so far. If you know snow technique with a baking soda or acrylic party, then this one is much better and more realistic. At least for 72 scale, of course. In 35, I would mix it with an AK Interactive Snow Sprinkles or Snow Micro Balloons. I use the party directly from the box and I can make, for example, a small ball or the whole snowman. I didn't expect it that I will make this model this year, but I asked my patrons which model they want to see and won this one. I'm now super glad about this choice, because it was crazy and unusual project. And since it is sci-fi, I enjoyed the freedom of creativity. I hope you learned some new tricks, or at least inspired you to try something unconventional. So that is all, thank you for watching and see you next time.